Hello everyone, this is Lolly. I'm here with the August theme for our paperclip art group. And I'm gonna show you the clip first and then we'll talk about the theme because I wanted it to represent the theme but not be so blatantly obvious. And this is a hidden clip, meaning it's from the back, and this one slides in from the left side of your page. The theme for August is family. Normally we think about our family as being, you know, our spouse, our children, and I decided to go back and do mine for siblings. So I have this die, which is from uh, Cottage Cuts, and I used to sell it in my shop. I'm pretty sure I'm out of them now, but I love it. It makes this a chain of peeps and then two individual ones. And I'm using this die, which uh, is from a collection of planner uh, labels from Elizabeth Craft Designs. This one I know for sure. This whole, it's a set. It is in my shop. And so I found this paper and it, it, this is some really pretty paper that I, that I have in my stash. And so I have cut out the bunnies in one of the pink sheets, and then I cut another one because I wanted it to have some stability. These stick up off of the back, and I wanted them to have some strength. And then I cut out this for what the base here, another one of these as to give it strength, and then one for the back, and then there's my paper clip. I used my Silhouette Design Studio to print out my peeps, and I think the font is called Camaraderie. And then I printed that out and cut out one piece right there, and I have a single piece here. And then I'm also using a Star Punch, which is extremely old, it's from the late 90s, from Family Treasures, which is a company that's not even available anymore. I'm sure you can find a Star Punch somewhere else. So what I decided to do was have a bunny representing me and my siblings, and then I have another little one down here. You could just see the face sticking up because there was another sibling who had been adopted and died when I was three years old. And I don't remember that sibling, but I did represent him here with this little bunny hair kind of down peeping beneath it all. And then I decided to use our birthstones. Now our birthstones are supposed to be the shiny gems, I know. But I couldn't get, um, of all the gems that I have, I couldn't find one particular set. They just matched the colors really well. So I went with these flat back pearls. I thought they would be kind of interesting to work with. So I have all this cut. Now I need to do the stars. And I'm using such muted colors that I thought giving them a tiny bit of distress with the walnut stain would be helpful. And I do mean tiny. I'm not doing a heavy hand here. I'm especially working on the bottoms here, but a little bit at the top. And I only need to do the front piece here. Okay, I don't need to do these two. I don't need to do that. I am going to do the top of this little guy here. The bottom will not be seen. And I'm going to do all the stars just lightly again. I'm not trying to make them look too vintagey. I just want a little bit of definition. That's my goal, definition. <laughs> what is your definition of distressing? There's that. Let's put that aside, this aside. So what I'm gonna do now is prep in that I'm going to cut all the holes on these. I'm gonna glue my la these layers together. There is a certain order you kinda need to do this before you punch holes, so. I'm going to glue, oh, you know what else? There's too many bunnies here, so what I'm going to do is trim off the last one. I didn't need to distress that so early. I'll have to go back and fix that. And here we go. Let's give that new end some distress and cut off this one as two. There kind of has a little bit of a, it's really clear where to see to trim that. Okay, now let's put those on here. Perfect, and this one. So that works really well there. And the other thing I did was I just took a pencil. There's a light indentation here or debossing for the eyes and the nose. And I just put my pencil in there and twisted it just to give it a little bit of accent. 
could use a uh, micron marker as well. That would be more permanent. And this one as well. There we go. All right, the other thing I want to do is to take all these stars and line them up. I want to punch a little hole so I can hang them, but I want to do them all at once so they're really identical. And I'm using my crop and I'm using the small hole punch right there. I think what I'll do is I will clamp these and I can also see what I'm doing. I know what I'll do. I'll clamp right here. And that way I can get this in there. Oh, much better. Perfect. Okay. Now we've got all those. Now what I want to do is to mark this for where I want to put my holes. And I'm, what I did, it's, it's kind of an unusual shape. So I did one in like printer paper quality. I'm folding it in half. And, I'm, and then I'm folding each end toward the middle. And then I will have this in fourths. And I'm going to mark this because once I straighten it out, I can't see the folds anymore. I do this often where I, I put a little template here. And now I want to mark that so that I know where to how deep to punch in. And I did it at a quarter of an inch before, and that was too deep into the project. So I'm going to do 3 sixteenths. That looks perfect. I'll connect those lines. Okay, that shows me how far up to go. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take a paper piercing tool, also known as an awl, and I'm going to put that down over over this, make sure, especially want to make sure the bottom is lined up. And then if I do here, here, and here, that's only three. So, but I have four sections. So I want to poke a hole basically right there in the middle of each section. But on this one, I'm going to part a little bit closer than middle. Now that gives me an idea of where those punches are going to go. Okay. Before I punch those, I want to put this on the back. And this time I want the paper clip to come this way. On, so I'm going to do this to remind me. And I need to be mindful that when I'm putting the paper clip on there, I need to leave the bottoms part available because that's where my holes are going to get punched. So if I just bring my little blade in here, and I want to make a little slit where this can pop out, and I want it to be... If I'm going down here, I want it to be above where this little crack and that crack are. And I'm going to put the big part of the paper clip through there and then push the little part of the paper clip behind it. And that is all I need to do. So if I flip that over, straighten it out a little bit. And now it's important to use some sturdy permanent glue. So on the back, I'm putting it under this, under that paperclip loop. I'm using Power Attack, and I'm going to put it all over the top of that paperclip. That's going to adhere the plastic, and then I can use this for uh, the paper-to-paper -paper aspects. Oops, I got way too much on there. It didn't come, and then I pushed too hard. All right, if you've been watching me at all, you know that this is a glue tube from Lawn Fawn. When it emptied, I filled it with barely art glue. Okay, now I'm going to use this to really clamp that down right above that paper clip because it's really hard to get a good seal there because of the bump. And these pink clips are from the Dollar Tree. I will give you a link to them down below. There we go. Now that's going to set up. And the other thing I want to do is to lightly give a little distressing just on the bottom of this. It gives it just a little bit of a shadow without making it really dark. Okay. And the other thing we're going to need is some jump rings and then the pearls and we will be good. But I am because of the fact that this is going to be so bumpy and difficult, I'm going to let this set for 20 or 30 minutes before I play with it. 
Okay, so once that was done, you can see my paper clip is, clip is up high so I can punch holes. And then what we're gonna do is get those holes punched right now. I'm going to use my crocodile and I'm going to use the small punch. Go right over the little holes that I had poked. Isn't that perfect? Okay, now I'm gonna add the bunnies on here and I'm going to offset them. In other words, they're not gonna go all the way down. Let's see how much I need, see. A little more than the bodies here and just part of their necks. And now I have this one that I want to add in here. This one is not backed up onto other cardstock because it's not necessary. It's gonna go between two of the holes and I see these two holes are further apart than the other ones, so that's where I'm going to go. And then I will trim that off. All right, and um, let's go ahead and get these on here. It's a lot easier to do that before we get the um, before we get the gems on there. If you want, you can back these up onto other stars as well, make them stronger, and then punch the holes again. It would make it better, and I think it'd be a little stronger. So I might just do that. Okay. So when you're getting your, your rings, now these are really thick rings. I, I don't normally use ones that thick, but I'm using what I have in my stash right now. And they are very tough and hard to, hard to bend. So when you're using a jump ring, you want to grab that and just twist it like this instead of pulling them apart. All right, and then I'm going to take this and do front sides together like that. And go. Otherwise, you run the risk of hanging the star on there backwards and going through all that for nothing. And then twist it back into place. And you can see how it's facing the right way now. So again, the right sides go together. One of the reasons that I chose to do my family paperclip a little different is that I thought I wanted it to signify my family, which is why I'm doing the birthstones, but yet it's generic enough that my swap partner will not be overwhelmed with having something representing my family that has nothing to do with them. It just looks like a cute paperclip. So now all those stars are facing the right way. So the only thing I have to do is to add this and then the gems onto here. So I am using these little nice little square foam, foam squares. Perfect size. So this one, this paper clip will be a reverse of the other one that I already showed you. Except I will still have the gems in there in the right place. I'll get that above the holes so they can swing, right? Okay, so I am using one of these, one of the white, and two of each, one of each of these blue ones here, different colors of blue. And I like to use gem tack to make sure I really get these gems on there and that they're not going to be moving around on me, that they're not going to dislodge. You see how this jewel picker picks up even that large stone. I think these are, it's a wonderful tool. If you ever have a hard time getting it to release whatever you're picking up, roll it off of it. Because sometimes it wants to keep sticking like this. You put it on there and just roll it off. It'll come right off. Now, if you're not in the paperclip art group on Facebook, I will put a link down below to the group and you just submit your request. You do need to be on Facebook for at least a year and answer the two questions that we give you. I'm also giving you under this video the link to all of my paperclip art videos. Now, this is too cute. I really, really love this. I'm so excited about this one. 
So thank you for watching. This is such a cute, cute thing to do. And if you don't have the dyes that I have, you can use any image. It can be a dog, a cat, to be represent your family members. And you don't have to use stars. You can just cut out a rectangle. You don't have to use that die either. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. And thank you for liking this video by giving it a thumbs up and for subscribing.